What's up, y'all? Joshua Martin here. And I'm Edward Crockett. And sadly, we can't come to the phone right now. But if you will leave us a voice message with your filmmaking question, we'd be happy to get to it and answer it on a future episode of the pod. Yo, what's up, everybody? I just want to jump in here real quick to give the announcement for the winner of the giveaway from the last episode uh, before we jump into this episode. And so the winner of the Lens Rental giveaway is Emmanuel. Congratulations, my guy. So what I don't need you to do right now is actually DM me uh, at Cine Dailies or I'll try to find you. But if anything, reach out to me if you see this episode and so I can get your information so we can get you that that discount code for Lens Rental. Again, thanks for commenting everyone who did. We'll try to do more giveaways and more resources for everyone who support this podcast series. So really appreciate it. Now, uh, enjoy this episode. It's a lot of good information. And uh, yeah, thanks again. See you. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Filmmaker Hotline. I'm your host, Jocelyn Martin, and Edward, my co-host. We have a special guest today. We have Eric Floberg. And uh, bro, thanks for being here. Yeah, hey, bro. Thank thanks you. for having me. I really appreciate um, it. Yeah, so today's going to be a very useful conversation. If you're coming from our last podcast, it was a bit of a ramble, but that's totally fine because that's what we're here to do. But this one's going to be quite helpful. We're going to be talking about fundraising for your film. Um, I asked my friend uh, Eric because he's been working on a documentary uh, for the past, how long now has it been? A year? Yeah, 10 going months. A year? 10 months. Jeez. And it's going to be incredible. It's with uh, uh, Joe, Joe Gear, and uh, they've been going all over the country document his journey but look i'm a, i'm a, i'm gonna let you introduce who you are because this is kind of a, a new audience that you'll be coming on to uh, so talk about who you are what the project is and again thank you for being here sweet uh yeah i'm eric floberg i've been doing filmmaking for about a decade started in the wedding scene and um really didn't really didn't understand what i was doing until maybe five <laughs> six years ago yeah. uh so about half that time was just like shooting in 30 frames per second and blowing all the highlights <laughs> oh, oh, no. all the time um <laughs> you just so offended yeah. all of youtube right now <laughs> yeah oh so sorry marquez brownlee so sorry he's um, upset cry cry but uh yeah so i really wanted to get serious about it because i i started making films and getting really cool opportunities like going to shoot a small mm-hmm. wedding in Yosemite. And I was like, I need to, I need to like know what I'm doing here. So yeah, kind of leverage it. Yeah. Finally started doing research and figuring all that stuff out. And that just kind of blossomed into being a way better wedding filmmaker, using all my storytelling capabilities and background in music to really enhance emotion in filmmaking. And, and I started YouTube in 2018, my own personal channel, um, which it's really been kind of, blowing up. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. It's yeah, been yeah, they, up, yeah. It's, it's been, it's been a grind. It's been a lot of time building that thing, but I wouldn't, I really wouldn't trade it for anything to have just all the opportunities I have now with putting that stuff out into the world and yeah, all the people I've connected myself to Mm -hmm. because of it. So Mm -hmm. now the next, the next endeavor is a lot of like short films on that channel. We'll be making a lot more this year, um, getting more into the narrative space, uh, obviously into the documentary space, that just kind of happened. We were, we were going to do like a, just a short mini doc on this thing. And and Joe and I just kept dreaming about what it could be and just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So yeah, yeah, no, I'm a documentary filmmaker, even though I didn't plan on being one. (laughs) Um, It just happens. I just love the idea of the the evolution of what us as creators can be because it can just venture to so many different things. But as, as long as it's feeding our, you know, our hunger to create, we just kind of go after it, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Side note, I just realized I'm still in my pajamas, to be honest. Nice. Wow. This is, this is, how, this is how, and it's a Tuesday. I thought it was Monday this morning when I woke up. Oh, hey, no. no. What today is it? It's Monday. It's Monday. Holy smokes. At yeah, least you have, the just... film, you, you have the filmmaker headwear, though. Your double roll beanie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got the A24. A24 sweater. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have eight twenty four pajamas. <laughs> no, imagine I have a Michael Michael Kors. My sister gave it to me. <laughs> nice, very nice. A little, little fancy here, um, but no, this is cool. So, uh, wow, yeah, I'm, uh, I've, it's been a pleasure kind of watching your progress. All the videos you kind of just put out about the documentary and, and the things you've been learning mm-hmm. have been really insightful for me because I know I'm, I'm in sort of in the same space. We kind of do um, similar things. Um, 
Uh, my path has been kind of like this long bend around. Even though I was in Israel last year shooting a dog, mm-hmm. I'm actually finishing up that dog. A lot has changed. We'll be we'll to probably talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. But um, Edward, could you um, <clears throat> for those who are new? Yeah, sorry for those who are new. Kind of you know, kind of give a scope what filmmaker hotline is and then how this kind of runs. Yeah, so film filmmaker hotline is just basically our. The goal of it is for us to answer your questions, um, and you can call 501-396-9689 and leave us a voicemail. Um, and really, like, if we don't know the answer, the goal is to find someone who does. Uh, like Eric. <laughs> like Eric. And uh, so I don't have any experience raising <clears throat> funds for a feature, um, but Eric does. And so that's the goal. We want to answer your questions as best we can. Yeah. So we're right now we're going to play the question that came in. This is actually really cool. This is, <laughs> I'm so happy that it's actually working. So people are actually calling in and stuff. So we're going to just play this um, and then go from there. Hey, Josh, this is Axel calling from LA. Listen, I'm working on my next feature and I wanted to see if you guys have any tips or advice on raising funds for a movie. Uh, right now I have a couple of production companies who are interested, but I'm still trying to figure out that. Hopefully you guys can cover a little bit of that on the podcast and I will look forward to checking out the episode and hope you guys are doing well and stay safe that's actually a lot of pressure because he's working on his next film and he's kind of like looking looking for advice <laughs> right uh but hey hey just what we're going to talk about um yeah i mean so eric how did you how did you start funding your this doc like when did you realize you needed to have some funds to do the traveling to kind of get the right crew even though you have a crew the, mm-hmm. the gear that you needed like what were some of the you know, you don't have to go through massive details. It depends on what you want to say, but what yeah. was that process like? Um, well, yeah, I think I bring a really nuanced perspective into this space with how we kind of piecemealed it together. Um, I had the realization that I was going to need a lot more funds once we started yeah. talking about the severity of the project. Once we started being like, we could go to this place and we could do this thing and we could Mm -hmm. go here and Mm -hmm. let's go to the mountains and let's go back to my hometown in Florida and let's do this track night in New York city. Um, so that's when I was like, okay, I'm, (laughs) I already had a plan to get one of my existing sponsors to maybe feature, um, and, and sponsor this short documentary, um, mini documentary. And so I approached a few brands to just be like, okay, it's a lot bigger now, but I promise it's going to be amazing. And it's going to be, fe- <laughs> it's gonna be feature length and all this stuff. And like, everyone was like, nah. And I'm like, <laughs> no, oh, geez. Yeah. And Listen, I was like, no. <laughs> okay, well, um, and yeah, I don't, I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound pessimistic, um, sure. when I give this answer. Uh, and truth be told, I am, I am, I have no sage wisdom on this topic to be fully frank and clear. I think Mm -hmm. what I do have, um, is a perspective of building something for a while that gave me the ability to self fund, uh, and, Mm. and have the confidence to self fund in the way we did. So, um, based on the entire budget, I was able to still land, um, a, 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 f- a few sponsorships, a handful of sponsorships sure. throughout the year on my YouTube channel that was, was able to cover, you know, a third to half of all the funding we needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my, my answer to this really is, it's not a sexy one. It's not one that's like, <laughs> and like, let's just face reality, you know, um, anything creative you approach in this life is not going to be easy and it's not going to be handed Absolutely to you. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta roll up your sleeves. Yeah. Anyone that thinks that like, Oh yeah. If I just, if I'm going to make a feature film, like any brand or any person's going to want to fund it. And you're like, uh, no, <laughs> it's, it's just not true. If you don't well, have proof true. of concept, if you don't have a portfolio that proves that you will make something that will be profitable, investors need to return they need to recoup their finances. They need yeah. to yes. profit. They want to profit yeah. off of it. Yeah. Like they yeah. don't just in the same way as a creative and you don't, you don't want to do things for exposure. A brand doesn't want to invest a lot of money into a project for exposure either. They want to profit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what is your plan going to be? And the truth is like, I don't think I really had a definitive plan pitching the, you know, 
the entities we pitched with like how we were going to make the money back. It was all just mm-hmm. kind of conceptual. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to just like, if I need to take an L on this project and spend possibly the biggest amount of money I've ever spent on anything to learn from it, that's what I'm going to do. Um, but the, the reason I was able to do that is because I spent five years building a brand and building, um, you know, like a dozen different streams of passive income that gave me the ability to have enough finances to self fund this in the first place. Yeah. And so although that it wasn't something I was setting out to do, uh, I was given the opportunity five years into building this thing. And when the opportunity met, um, just the dream of building something big, I was able to make it happen. And I can't, I can't have this conversation without also talking about the community that surrounds me. And mm-hmm. I've been in a co-working studio for five years, Creative Club Chicago, and everyone Ooh. in here, yeah, we've been <laughs> we've been working together on like all of our different personal brands for you know half a decade now, and we've just been scratching each other's backs and just giving each other work, and we've built so much trust over time that when yeah. this project came up, everyone was like, "I'm in." Yeah. Like fly That's me cool. out there. I'll just help, you know, like just cover, cover the cost of me being on this trip and I will be a part of it. Cause I want to be a part of it. And yeah. they, they believed in a way, a way more profound way than any brand did because yeah. they, mm-hmm. they know my track record. They mm-hmm. know what we could make together. And so they were mm-hmm. in on it. And so we're now sitting on something that has, you know, it has the opportunity to get bought by a big streaming service potentially. Right, um, right. And e- even if it doesn't, like we still have a pretty robust plan of, uh, of right. self-releasing and recouping money and hopefully and probably profiting as well. So, um, yeah, it's a complicated response, but like the, no, it's, the, there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot to unpack. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so we, yeah, we can just do that then. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to go, go back a little bit because yeah, I, I there's there's this um there's this immediate jump to uh, if I have this idea um, sometimes you, th- you might think that oh this might be good enough for for whatever entity can kind of hand over and get the money that's not always not the case I would highly encourage like anybody listening right out the gate to try to do this first project if it is your first project on a budget like i mean sorry on on no budget Mm, um because um if it is your first trying to add money into this gets really complicated and you you kind of touched on investors want to get profitable and so if if your idea is just kind of running the mill kind of the same old thing they're gonna (laughs) if it's not gonna make any money that's gonna be putting you in the hole and if this is your first project, narrative and doc, we had to kind of um, separate the two because I think mm-hmm. funding kind of works differently for both of them. Hundred um, um, percent. Yeah, you have to be able to um, try to create something that has that doesn't cost you much, if anything, out of your own pocket. Because now you got it on your belt, you can actually start building a crew that you trust. Sort of like you did this. Sometimes you do need to hire actual people to do the job right, but mm-hmm. if you're just starting, like. It's more rewarding if you can start building the blocks yourself without getting too much money involved. And it's not like, uh, and, and I get this too, like sometimes I want to be, I have this idea, I need to find as much money as I can to try to make it happen. And sometimes it does work that way, but other times you might need to just realize, take a step back, do you actually have a plan? Do you actually have a story in mind? Do you actually have things written down to actually present um, to even get somebody's attention, Le- uh, just the attention, because it's like, you, who knows you're going to actually get a meeting with X and Y investors. Um, but if I could, let me not go too far now, but let's actually kind of talk through like some of the differences between narrative funding and doc funding. Because I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think when it comes to documentaries and stuff, um, there are avenues like grants that you can um fund cuz i've i've had some friends who who kind of wrote letters to their city or whatever or art commissions that they have in the area to write a grant for a particular story that you want to talk about and they got the funds and support that way 
Um, a lot of times documentaries are rent, uh, are funded by organizations that need a story to be told. Um, mm-hmm. And if um, that was my case when I went to when, when I went to Israel and all the trip, all the international trips I've done have been funded through an organization, either it be a church organization, university organization. Those things were able, I was able to give my rating that way. But if you're the one that has a story, I think um, a lot of times it does just start with no budget. Like it's, it starts with you just be able to, to try to create what, you, create what you can based on the resources that you have around you. Hmm. I don't know if anybody have anything to chime in with that. But that's what I think with the documentary route. I'm sure there's other routes, but those are the routes that I've seen and the routes that I've taken. Yeah, and I think it sounded, Eric, you touched on this a little bit, but I think having something to show that you can do what you're setting out to do, or you can do something, mm-hmm. you can punch above your weight, like, hey, I made this for no budget. An investor mm-hmm. can potentially see that and see that there's at least some proof there that they're investing in something that's worth it. Is that, did you have that experience at all? Yeah, I mean, getting funding through YouTube sponsorships, like that, I, I'm fortunate enough to, at this point, let, let that be a pretty substantial part of my, my income, um, especially, mm-hmm just Mm -hmm. through the content side of stuff that I make. And so that created a padding, even though it was not necessarily directly associated with the film, like we gave no equity to any brands for that. Um, It just kept the foundation for me to feel comfortable enough to spend that much. Cause I'm like, well, surely if this keeps going well, like I'll have more brands like this in the future and I'll be able to compound this. Um, But like really in all reality, once we got to a certain point, I didn't really care to pursue more funding because I saw the vision of how I could self fund. And I Mm. started to feel like I actually don't want, you know, it's a running documentary. Like we had, we, we basically had a touch point with any running brand you can think of with Joe being as popular of a person as he is. And I just kept being like, ah, I don't know. Like I, because they're probably going to have expectations of like, we want Joe wearing all this the whole time I'm glad it's you like brought that up yeah it's yeah. just like I, we already have so much footage i want to use and if we can't use it because he's not wearing x mm, y and z it's like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. no nah, i'd rather self fund give no equity and or like have those stipulations and just like truly make what we want to make because yeah. i think that's going to be the most profound thing and at the end of the day yeah. i think that's an investment worth investing in yeah because yeah. once it's released and it's done the way we want to this will be the proof of concept that anyone in the future can be like, we're going to bet on these guys for the next thing. So that, that's cool. Wow. Great point. Bringing that up too, because another thing you had to think about when getting into narrative and you want sponsors or, or what have you, they have a say you, I mean, it depends, you know, on the agreement you make and whatever, but brands or whatever might have a say of what can be shown, what cannot be shown. You had to kind of negotiate mm-hmm. that out. So again, if you're early on creating these these things, if you want to create narrative stuff, try to avoid all that because mm-hmm. you want to be able to say, I had command over this, this entire vision. And for you to do that, that shows, starts to show your style, starts to show how you communicate with, uh, how you communicate story. Um, it shows all those things without being, without bending or being tailored to the money that's involved. Um, not saying it's a bad thing because eventually you get there, but like, you want to be influenced by your own vision first, I think, most of the time, if you're just starting out. That's mm-hmm. how I feel. That's how, because right now I'm in the process of writing a narrative piece, and I don't want, get, I don't want to get too many things involved because, um, because I, I want to be able to, to, to fully understand what do I see, what do I want to communicate mm-hmm. uh, without having these stimulations in, involved or maybe some hindrance involved, right, because of certain types of money. So mm-hmm. it all depends. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man, and I'm I'm really happy we went that route because now, yeah, we're we're getting started on on editing, and it's just so exciting to know that we have zero guardrails. Like we can yeah. literally do whatever we whatever want. Whatever you to, want. Mm-hmm. To go back to the point of what you're saying and the difference between funding a nar- uh, a narrative piece versus a documentary, it's just like. I mean, 90 to 95% of the time, we're not controlling the scene light and audio wise. So it's just like you grab a camera, you run with a microphone and go. And and like, we're going to be using iPhone footage. We're going to be using all sorts of different footage. Um, Anything that's honestly going to convey the emotion. Like there's one shot. I don't mean to name drop here, but Ryan Booth got involved in this. <laughs> I saw that. Booth, I saw man. that. 
and uh, booth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we back in May, we were on a trip to New York, and um, I forget how how it happened. I think it happened through Twitter first, and then Ryan and I were DMing, and he's just like, "Yeah, I would, I'd love to hang out with you guys. You know, next time you're in the city." So we were like running crazy late that day. He still showed up, and I That's I was just wild. like blown away by his generosity yeah. and like coming yeah. two hours late th- later than when we were expecting. And he just hung out with us. He casually interviewed Joe in the most perfect way. Jeez. And wow. And and so uh, race week came up. It, you know the 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 superficial climactic event of this documentary is Joe trying to run under two hours and forty minutes at the California International Marathon. The week of the race, Ryan tags us in a huge story, just like I see what you guys are doing. Keep going. Just being crazy encouraging. I saw that. He's yeah. This is a gem Love of a human. That. Yeah. Love and that. I responded to it, and I was like. Can, or can I can I fly you out? Like, can we, do you want to be there? And he's like, um, let me get back to you. And so a few days go by, and I'm like, it's it's not gonna happen. Like, there's no way. And then he just got back and was just like, yeah, talk to my family, and we're I'm good to go. And I'm like, that's okay. so cool. <laughs> so we like we picked him up from the airport. He stayed in our Airbnb. Dude slept on the couch. He's doing dishes for us. Like. He's just a, such an incredible person. I can't mm. like, I can't put into words like how wonderful of a human that mm. guy is. Um, but he was just so encouraging um, in in that week in the in the final days really of production. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he was just the one that was encouraging us along the way. Just like you guys are doing this right. You're you know you're you're scrappy. He even brought up a point you know to go back to some of the financial stuff like. He's like, the way you guys are doing this, like, it, just look at that table. And we had a dining room table with all of our gear split between seven of us. He's like, that, <laughs> he's like, that's $50,000 worth of gear sitting on the table right there. And I like, yeah, you're actually right. I'm like doing you're the math. Right. I'm like, yeah. He's like, if you had to, he's like, if you had to do rentals for all this, that would be insane. And it's like, but yeah. you guys all own this. You're leveraging everything yeah. you've already made. And he was so like, he was so like, I'm just here to kind of witness what's going on and encourage you not to like really help at all, even though he did help a ton. Um, Anyway, all that to say he like no one was stationed around the last corner of the race and he got an iPhone clip because he wasn't sure if his, he didn't know if his super eight was like working that day. He was kind of Mm -hmm. dicey on it. He's like, I'd rather get something that's going to for sure work. And it's this um, incredible iPhone clip where he's like screaming at Joe running around the last corner. Like he's like diving between people on, you know, watching, spectating. And it's just like, I can't wait. Like, I know that that clip is just going to be so emotionally impactful, especially with the medium of it, like being an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, there's just been moments like that where it's like, wow, it's just so, so profound. Um, knowing that we just set out to do something and magic like that happened along the way mm. for the, for the expense of Ryan, just wanting to be there and encourage yeah. us yeah. just for the expense of flying him out and already having an Airbnb. I was like, can I pay you? And he's like, no, it's just, you know, so it's just like, man, sometimes the, our filmmaking, uh, sometimes we forget how willing and Ray our filmmaking community is to help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially if if they see you doing the work, like obviously it's not everybody, but like just sure. like there's no there's no reason not to just ask. You mm-hmm. never know the response. That's been my whole c- backbone of my career. All I do is ask, <laughs> mm-hmm. and the worst you can get is no. Hundred <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, percent. That that's a testament right there. Getting back to like his question and stuff. I know we said a, quite a bit. What would be some practical things? We could probably take a second. Just like some practical things he should look out for sounds like he wants to fund um give him like a a scenario where he has to fund something this project or he does it for out of pocket so let's do the let's do the funding i don't even know what your story is (laughs) um but i would have to say have a treatment have a script ready because you're gonna have to pitch you're gonna have to pitch this to x and y right um, there is a resource um, that I've that I've actually purchased. His name is he's a filmmaker out of LA. He's a DP, uh, Noma Noma Crow. He uh, has a um, he has several different 
courses on filmmaking with no budget, film, filmmaking with a micro budget, and then uh, I believe a high budget. I have the no budget one, but I would highly recommend checking out that resource. He goes through all of the nitty gritty business side of the things where he talks about how to reach these sponsors or backers or whatever. He'll go into all of that. So definitely, I would say research that. And as this a whole, like just kind of research on what would, he, what would he research on, guys? I'm kind of well. Kinda lost I know he here. he mentioned that he's uh, this is his second feature, I think. Is it? And so I must have missed that. Yeah, I think he I think he said that. So I mean, I don't know if there's any way to. It's hard because we don't have a ton of details, right? right. Sure. Uh, so if this is his second feature, I would say f- figure out do a case study for yourself. I love use I love using this case study stuff. We're we're in, right now seventy sixteen. We're in a phase of case studies right now for all the projects we've done because this is going to help us get other jobs in the future. But take a case study, figure out what worked with your last narrative film. That's good. Yeah. And then, so you document that, write that down. Then do the opposite, figure out what didn't work. And that's going to give you a clear goal of where to move forward with, I think, because again, we don't have a lot of details, but if you have that information for yourself, that is going to be so valuable for you to kind of take the next step, I think. Um... Yeah. <laughs> the treat the treatment and pitch situation, my perspective on anything like that is if you if you really want it and you really want to get the attention of someone who has the finances, has the resources, has the following, anything like that, you have to figure out how to get their attention outside of a DM, a cold email or something that everyone else does. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. For example, our podcast, Rally Caps, we started it two years ago and we landed guests I never and have been and will continue to land guests I've never thought we would be able to. Right. Just because we do funny pitches, video pitches to them. Like, that's cool. We'll, imp- <laughs> we'll that's impersonate cool them. We'll impersonate them. We'll just do like a stupid joke or monologue for mm-hmm. Danny Gewurz's. I, I impersonated him sitting on a stool, like really quiet. I know and exactly how that would play. Yeah, just like whispered <laughs> by, you know, like, I love you. And I love you. <laughs> what's crazy is if, if, if it gets in front of their eyes, yeah, virtually every single time they're like hundred percent, I'll be on the podcast. So that's cool. Th- you are a creative, if you're a filmmaker, you are a creative person at heart. You just are mm-hmm. your filmmaker. Mm-hmm. So how can you instead channel your mindset of, I need to spend X amount of money mm-hmm. and use the, the resource that is just as powerful in your time and skill to leverage attention in that way? Yeah. How can you film yourself or film a short narrative piece that's just you maybe acting in it or something Mm -hmm. that will get the attention of that person who Mm -hmm. might be able to fund the thing or help you find the funding. Yeah. Like think so far outside of the box. That's something. And that's why I can't specifically give advice based on experience because I, I didn't want to do that enough for the documentary. And if I did, I would have made a short film in and of itself to pitch a potential investor. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't and that's okay. Yeah. But that would be my advice is if yeah. you're looking for that funding, you're not, you're not willing to take the, the five to 10 years to build something else that is financially stable and robust to mm-hmm. self fund, then think, think creatively in how you're going to approach finding other people's money. Yeah. And just kind of going off of that, too, is like when you, yeah, so the flip side of it, outside of trying to find sponsors and whatnot, is to just do it from yourself. Like, just do it with no budget and just run with it. Because now, we talked about this in our last podcast, um, Edward and I, we just talked about the freedom you get, the freedom of having constraint. Because um, mm-hmm, that's yeah. what creativity does, right? Creativity opens the door for rethinking the things that you have available to yourself already. That allows you to create something even better because Mm -hmm. sometimes when money gets involved yes you can possibly do more but if you don't have a constraint then you don't think outside of that box anymore Mm -hmm. you don't think outside the financial means anymore and i think that still applies to this um so make shorter films or whatever the short film is and again like whatever you learned from the last i'm talking to you directly what was his name Uh, axel um yeah uh yeah, again, relearning what you learning from what you did before, but then see like what constraints allowed you to be better, and see if you can replicate that constraint again, possibly. Like, 
again, we're just kind of just throwing this out there. We hope this does help, but there's a lot of um, um, there's a lot of possibility that you have, and um, if you if you absolutely need to you know need funds and stuff, I hope those resources that we mentioned earlier will help. <laughs> um, not to say it, not to say that it might, but anyway, like there's 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 so many things you could possibly do if you just kind of think outside of your limitations and use those limitations to kind of benefit you. Did that make sense? I have no idea. I'm yeah, like 100%. Talking. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's great. It made sense. <laughs> one thing, mm-hmm. one thing too, like, I guess, um, going back to what you're saying, um, um, Eric, about the back end of once your film is complete, is that even though, yeah, you've self-funded everything, there, there's, funny enough, there's like this kind of open door to submitting films into festivals so you had to pay a fee and whatnot, but like if it gets pretty far, you get more eyes. Like B festivals get a lot of eyes now, um, but outside of that, like submitting to streaming services, like if you can get a deal from a streaming service, if it's a really good film, doc, whatever, Amazon eats up that stuff. I've seen some terrible, terrible films on Amazon. I'm like, mm-hmm. how, how, how did what? What's the okay, we're doing this. <laughs> and so it's like, that just gives me a lot of hope that there's a lot of still opportunity out there to even if you didn't get any money to make the film, you made the film, now you have an opportunity to actually make money off of it through streaming services because there are a lot of streaming services out there, festivals out there, show it locally, show it, uh, uh, what's the next tier from locally? Locally, then there's like, Regionally, into me regionally, yeah, yeah. Just kind of trying to work it. A a great um, uh, internationally, YouTuber. internationally, internationally. <laughs> There's worldwide. the dad joke, Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. <laughs> no. Um, um, do you guys know who D for Darius is? No. D for no, Darius. No. Um, he's an OG YouTuber, filmmaker YouTuber, and he made a film about his mother um, dealing with schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. And he made a, it made a, it was like a hybrid doc slash narrative piece about his life. And he was in it and he directed it and shot it. Won countless awards. And he did it with a, you know, a, a, I think it was a GH3 or something, right? Uh, fantastic. But it was, it was story focused, right? It didn't matter about the gear. He mm-hmm. used what he had. And he still makes, you know, very relevant content today about low budget filmmaking stuff. So there's just a ton, there's a ton of resources out there. But yeah, um, I, say I would because, say, yeah, go oh, you go ahead. No, you got it. All right. Well, I would just I, say like I, I it remember sounds. I cut you off, so you got it. <laughs> uh, apparently, I don't. I don't care. Uh, but I, I, it sounds like really at the end of the day, like think outside the box and don't like. I would say, sound from Eric. I mean, I've watched your videos and the background on how you run your business and everything, and so like that is you being able to self fund that is an unconventional way to do it, right? Like mm-hmm. the industry standard would be to reach out to investors and do the typical thing. I mm-hmm. think there's plenty of room and like uh, Joshua, what you're suggesting is also unconventional, like figure it out yourself, like sell, like go with no budget. But I think there's plenty of room to say, okay, I'm gonna throw out what everyone else has done in the past or what everyone, like what I think I should do and send an impersonation video to this to somebody <laughs> to get their funding or whatever it is like, that's, I mean, it's inspiring yeah. to me because I'm thinking about doing some similar things like little mini docs and stuff. And so mm-hmm. that's that's yeah. where I land on it. And, I, I, I mean, love the, I, oh, go ahead. For, for anyone that's listening who might want a different perspective as well, um, if, if, you're, if you're really serious about building something long term, there's so much value in getting to a place where you can self-fund a project of, of sig- significance. Yeah. Um, and if, if you are okay with the idea of doing something that might feel boring to you in order to make money, and if you're interested in the idea of getting rid of all of your debt and saving and investing your money yeah. well, and like mm-hmm. really properly managing your finances well, mm-hmm. you afford yourself so many more opportunities as a filmmaker and creative. Mm-hmm. And like what I'm going through right now is just like, every year I'm adding a new column to my business of, yeah. of revenue. And yeah. every time I'm able to invest in that, I can hire somebody new to then compound that even more. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can hire someone new to compound that even more. And I get to a place where like, if I ever want to do a narrative film, I'll 
probably be able to self-fund that as well. Um, especially if this first one, this documentary does really well and nets yeah. us a good return profit wise. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of, um, financials, you have a few courses, right? Yeah, I have a, a wedding Plug photography. Yourself. Do it, do it right now. Plug yourself. Do it. It's the, do it. They're not currently live. Um, we okay. had a, we had uh, the classroom open for enrollment two separate times, but it's going to move to an evergreen model where you can enroll in it indefinitely um, starting this year. Hopefully, in like a month or two, it'll mm-hmm. um, it'll be evergreen. And we have tons of ideas for my new running channel to uh, to make educational content for that as well in the future because it's just one of those things. Once it's built, it can be sold in perpetuity for yeah. indefinite amount of time. And you know, once the once the evergreen content of the classroom becomes a little too old and outdated, we just use the same exact structure and bones and model with all the new gear and whatever, and then mm-hmm. make a new version of it. Make it, a new version. Yeah. And That's you cool. know, it's. It's already got the brand. It's already got the recognition. It's just a machine at that point. So yeah, yeah, just spending your time investing in things that may not be as sexy or the thing that you want to do, but investing in those, those things that will build the foundation for you financially so that you can pursue those creative projects that, yeah, if they're a great idea, they might even net you more revenue too. Yeah. So. Education is wealth. It goes both ways. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something earlier, but I don't know if this makes sense anymore. But I, lo- I love the idea of the unknown. It just gets me fired up because there's, there's so many ways to kind of go about certain things. But also, it gives me a chance to really hone in what, funda- what foundational pieces I need to set to start moving forward in some direction. Cause like sometimes I know, I know the unknown paralyzes a lot of people. I have friends who get paralyzed because of the thought of, well, I just don't know what to do or I don't know how to go about it. Um, and I think we all have some little inkling. We'll have some person to kind of lean on to get us, to get us going. Um, but I think you know, once you kind of get yourself over that hump of, or that, that fear of the unknown, and start laying the foundations, the unknown becomes exciting because you can see the possibilities of where mm-hmm. it can go. Josh was always dropping bars on these episodes. He just go. he starts fake. going. I just ramble. I, I ramble, take notes so. the whole time. He doesn't know it. I'm so weird with a <laughs> notepad. And, uh, but no, bro, thank you, uh, Eric, for or just jumping in. I know your time is very uh, precious. <laughs> No, I'm happy to. It was a really good conversation. It's a, it's one yeah. that people don't want to have. Like yeah. a lot of people just want to hear an answer where it's like, all right, this is how you do it. This is how you pitch for an investor and you're going to get $50,000. It's just like, yes, that's, not, that's not the reality, right? It's, it's very rarely the reality at all. Very like, rare. You, right. At the end of the day, Blessings like any to, kind of, any okay. kind of creative entrepreneurial pursuit needs to be yeah. fed with a spoonful of reality and understanding that it's not a microwave process. Like you need mm-hmm. to, you need to do the work to find opportunities mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. really like commit to doing the work. Yeah. We should, we should do a case study on um, Danny Gravertz and his uh, yeah. recent success For with what he did. Uh, but it, funny enough, he has an open case that we, his YouTube channel, right? He, he mm-hmm. compounded, compounded the content he was making. It was working towards that, working towards it, whatever he's doing behind the scenes too. But we have sort of this, layout of a, 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 a sort of a little bit of a foundation to see how he ended up where he is now finishing up his film which will be dropping in april i believe um i got i think it's in april i don't know, I don't know he mentioned in his last video i can't but, wait uh, yeah, yeah i got I'm my tickets so i'm just it. waiting for yeah we'll be going to chicago to actually see it eric so yeah. yo we'll be we'll be out there eventually again oh to see we'll you guys. be there yeah <laughs> Well, Eric, thank you for being here. And if you enjoy this conversation and you want to call in and have your question answered, you can call the Filmmaker Hotline and we'll see you on the next pod.